start, we have made it. Good evening. The space shuttle Columbia, astride a giant rocket, successfully blasted away from Earth launching a new era in man's exploration of other worlds. Shortly after the sun rose over Florida, hundreds of thousands of spectators at Cape Canaveral watched the Columbia rise, belching orange flame and white smoke. It was a spectacular sight, to use the words of President Reagan, who watched the liftoff on television from the White House. Marvin Scott has more from Cape Canaveral. It was the dawn of a new era. After all the setbacks and disappointing delays, this was to be the day America's first reusable space plane was to fly. Astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen felt it was go when they were awakened at 2 a.m. and had breakfast of bacon and eggs. They wore smiles of confidence as they left their crew quarters for the six-mile drive to Launch Complex 39A, where again they crawled into the cramped cockpit of Columbia as crews topped off the external fuel tank with half a million pounds of liquid oxygen and hydrogen. There was an air of anticipation in launch control, where the countdown continued to go flawlessly. As the clock went beyond the T-minus nine minute mark, the point at which computer problems forced a hold and subsequent scrub of Friday's launch, there was a burst of applause at the press site. Exactly 59 minutes after dawn, Space Shuttle Columbia was ready to fly. Six, five, four, we've gone for main engine start. We have. You can hear the cheering and you can hear the roar of the crowd here, three miles from Launch Complex 39 as the space shuttle, two and a half years behind schedule, finally lifts off the pad. Listen to those rockets generating over six million pounds of thrust as she goes skyward, inching off the pad at 70 miles per hour, now moving upwards of 1,000 miles per hour, and in a matter of moments, she'll be going faster than a speeding bullet at 18,000 miles per hour. Those three main rocket engines burning magnificently, flying high with a white plume miles into the blue Florida sky. Now coming up, now we should see the solid rocket boosters separating at 2 minutes and 12 seconds into the flight of Columbia. There is separation. There is separation. Those boosters will now fall at from an altitude of 25 miles, will descend by parachute into the Atlantic, some 160 miles downrange. They'll be recovered and used on the next flight. Several former astronauts were among the shuttle watchers, including the first human to set foot on the moon. Oh, I think all pilots the world over would like to be riding that machine. This kind of thrust outward uh, is really a reflection of what America's got to do now. There's a tremendous feeling of patriotism out here today. A woman from Nebraska likened it to a $10 billion ego trip. A beaming VIP told an interviewer, Columbia has restored our pride and our technological confidence. That pride also felt by foreigners. A British journalist thrust his hand into an American reporter's and said, Congratulations, America. You did it. Well, Columbia did do it. It proved it can be launched into space. Now it has to prove that it can fly back to Earth safely on Tuesday. At the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, this is Marvin Scott, Independent Network News.